I need to trim my backdrop so that I can get it to fit down closer to this terrain shape. Now what I have is a small piece of foam here and I'm going to take a sharpie and just run that along the bottom of the backdrop. And I know this isn't as thick as this gap, but I can always cut it twice. And if I cut it once and it's too short, well, then it's always too short. So I'm going to start with this thickness here. And if I need to cut it again, well, I can do that. In this area here, I'm just going to be a little bit careful and try to trace this shape or trace it close enough. And <laughs> it kills me drawing on this backdrop since it's so nice. But if I trim away too much here, I have all, all kinds of options of filling in any gaps. And I really, I have that everywhere. But I'm pretty happy with how it's trimmed. Now it's still not a perfect fit to the bottom, but it fits close enough. Still a little bit of a gap over here. Close enough though. The next thing I will need to do, well, I need to figure out how I want to secure it. And I believe I'm going to try the tape. So once I have some tape, then I'm going to trim away the sky and get ready to secure it permanently. It is time to remove the blue sky from my Lark photo backdrop. I want to apologize for the background noise. I'm using my kitchen island here and I got the dishwasher going and I'm doing laundry. So some noise in the background. What I'm going to do is I have a brand new hobby blade, brand new number 11 blade. I'm going to put the backdrop underneath my cutting mat and I'm just going to work my way down the backdrop and I'm going to trim the blue sky away from the terrain. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut along the edge of the terrain and cut away the sky. Now if I have just a little fraction of blue sky remaining, I'm not going to sweat that too much. You can see I have a little bit of blue along the edge. And I'm okay with that, you know. I would need a lot better vision and a lot more light to trim it any closer than that. So I think that's going to be just fine. I think that'll match close enough to my blue backdrop now that I don't think it's going to be too noticeable. So I'll just continue on doing it the same way. I got the backdrop trimmed. I have some Gorilla double-sided mounting tape. So I think it's time to get out to the layout and see if I can get this thing installed. I have the backdrop taped into position. And you can see the areas 
I have the blue like behind the trees here. It doesn't look too bad. You know, you get back a few feet and you can barely see it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to trace around the outline of the top and then I'm going to put some double-sided tape up there and see if I can get it back in the same position it's in right now. I've given this a little bit of thought and I have to handle this 8 foot backdrop by myself. So what I've come up with is I'm going to start in the middle, work one way, and then once this side is done, I'll work this way. Well, I used up all my tape. That's all I got. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in this spot right here. I'll peel off the backing, stick the backdrop up here, and then I'll peel it off as I go. All right, I'm just working my way down the backdrop, removing this backing here. Try not to go too far at one time, maybe six or eight inches. And then I'll take the backdrop, just kind of pull it out. Try to keep it taut right here. I don't want to real baggy. Okay, now just pull it back and continue on. We got half of the backdrop attached to the backdrop, and once you stick this backdrop material to this double sided tape. That's it, it's stuck. So working it just a small section at a time I think is the way to go. So I'll get this second half of the backdrop attached and I should be good to go. Well the backdrop is up. Wasn't too awful bad. You know there's a little bit of distance here from the thickness of the tape that might actually provide a little bit of a 3D effect. Now here, I need to get in with a paintbrush and paint out those pencil marks. You can see where the pencil marks are here. And then, you know, like right in here. I'm pretty satisfied with how I was able to keep the alignment. And you can see my index mark right here. I hit it right on the money. And that method seemed to work pretty well where I started in the center, worked one way, and then once I had this side attached, then I came back and worked this way. And I'm pleased with how that worked out. The gaps down underneath the backdrop, I'm not concerned about that at all, because all of this terrain needs to be finished. So, you know, I'm going to fill in up to the backdrop. Not a problem. And it's like in this corner, you know, where this drops off, well, I'll just bring the rocks out a little bit further here. So I'll get it all to blend in, and I'm not going to have any blue spaces underneath the backdrop. Uh, you know, one thing at a time, you know, I need to work on this. I'm going to redo this where I have this huge pullout section. I'm going to cut that way down where I just have a small pullout section. Well, I have to say, I really like this Lark backdrop. 
And I think I'm going to do the same thing, you know, here in this area. So I'll get a backdrop for this area. And then for a couple other places on the layout as well. So I'm pleased with it. I like it. I think the, the Lark Products 10.5 mil photo backdrop is a pretty nice piece. And I'm kind of enthusiastic about it. And I'm enthusiastic about working on this scene and getting a little further along. So, that's it for this video. I thank you for watching.